The economies of Canada and the United States are similar because they are both developed countries and are each other's largest trading partners. However, key differences in population makeup, geography, government policies and productivity all result in different economies. While both countries are in the list of top 10 economies in the world in 2018, the U.S. is the largest economy in the world, with $20.4 trillion, with Canada ranking 10th at $1.8 trillion. The population of Canada in July 2018 was 37,058,856 while the population of the United States was 328,928,146 in November 2018, almost 10 times larger than Canada. According to the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development OECD's 2018 report, Canadians pay lower personal income taxes than Americans. According to KPMG the corporate tax rate in Canada was 26.50% compared to 27% in the United States based on January 2018 data. Canada's 2017 debt-to-GDP ratio was 89.7%, compared to the United States at 107.8%. In 2016, Canada ranked 24th and the U.S. 30th out of 35 OECD countries in terms of tax revenue-to-GDP ratio. In the U.S. News and World Report's 2019 Best Countries Report, which ranked 80 countries, Canada ranked 7th on Open for Business compared to the United States which ranked 48th out of the 80 countries. Canada placed 1st on Quality of Life, 2nd on Citizenship, 6th on Entrepreneurship, and 3rd overall. The U.S. ranked 1st in terms of power and 4th in terms of cultural influence. Topic. Current Overview 2018. This article compares the economies of Canada and the United States based on GDP, debt-to-GDP ratio, inflation, unemployment, public debt, taxation, and purchasing power parity. In 2016, Canada's tax revenue to GDP ratio was 31.7% ranking 24th out of 35 OECD countries, compared to the US at 26% ranking at 30th. According to the OECD, the population of Canada in July 2018 was 37,058,856 while the population of the United States was 300 128,928,146 in November 2018, almost 10 times larger than Canada. For the 2017-2018 period Canada's annual population growth rate was 1.4%. This was the highest annual population growth since 1989-1990. In 2016, the New York Times reported that based on December 2016 Census Bureau data, from July 2015 to July 2016, the U.S. population increased by 2.2 million or 0.7 percent, represented its smallest annual expansion in 80 years. Dot the slowest rate of annual growth since 1937, though census methods have changed over that time. Based on International Monetary Fund IMF data reported in an April 2018 World Economic Forum article, the United States economy increased from $19.4 trillion in 2017 to $20.4 trillion. The United States has the largest economy globally and Canada ranks 10th at $1.8 trillion. 
Canada's GDP is similar to that of the state of Texas, which had a gross state product GSP of $1.696 trillion in 2017, the U.S. share of the global market economy estimated at $79.98 trillion, is c. 25%, which is down from 35% in 2005. China's global e-commerce market share has grown rapidly from less than 1% in c. 1998 to 42% in 2018. China now has second largest economy in the world with a value of $14 trillion. Canada's 2017 debt to GDP ratio was 89.7%, compared to the United States at 107.8%. The GDP of the United States increased by 2.3% to $19,390.6 billion compared to Canada with a GDP of $48,265 billion and growth of 3% according to the January 2018 International Monetary Fund's IMF Annual World Economic Outlook WEO. .According to the IMF's 2018 Annual Article 4 Mission to Canada, compared to all the G7 countries, including the United States, Canada's total government net debt to GDP ratio is the lowest. Canada has been the G7 leader in economic growth since 2016. The unemployment rate in Canada is at its lowest level since C.1978. Over 600,000 full-time jobs have been created in Canada since early 2016. The IMF's 2018 annual Article 4 mission to the United States reported that unemployment is low, inflation is well contained, and growth is set to accelerate. During the course of this administration, the economy is expected to enter the longest expansion in recorded U.S. history. Topics covered include competition, debt, sustainability analysis, economic indicators, fiscal policy, fiscal sustainability, monetary policy, tax policy, and trade policy. The International Monetary Fund's annual World Economic Outlook provides the main economic indicators in Canada in selected years between 1980 and 2017. Inflation under 2% is in green. In 2016 the GDP per capita in Canada was 44,820 compared to 57,638 in the U.S. This table show the same economic indicators in the United States in selected years between 1980 and 2017. Inflation under 2% is in green. <laughs> <laughs> International trade Canada and the United States are member states of international trade organizations, including NAFTA. Replaced by the United States-Mexico-Canada Agreement USMCA, negotiated in 2018, G7, G20, OECD and WTO. According to a Global Affairs Canada 2018 report, Canada's exports increased 5.7% to a record high in 2017 of $546.7 billion Canadian dollars, $29.2 billion above the exports level in 2016. In 2017 imports also rose to an all-time high of $1,108 billion Canadian dollars. In 2017, Canada's exports increased to Japan, India, South Korea, Germany, the United Kingdom, and China. In September 2017, the Comprehensive Economic and Trade Agreement came into force. 
In March 2018, Canada signed the Comprehensive and Progressive Agreement for Trans-Pacific Partnership CPTPP. In October 2018 Canada, Mexico and the United States negotiated the United States-Mexico-Canada Agreement USMCA to replace NAFTA. In October 2017, Canada began new free trade negotiations with the Pacific Alliance Latin America Trade Bloc formed by Chile, Colombia, Mexico and Peru, and in March 2018 with the Mercosur South American member countries, according to StatScan, Canada's trade trade deficit shrank to can $416 million, $318 million in September 2018, according to the August 2018 International Trade Compliance ITC report, in 2017, U.S. merchandise export exports increased $95.7 billion or 6.6% from $1,451 billion in 2016 to $1,546.7 billion. During the same period, U.S. imports increased by $155.1 billion or 7.1% up from $2,187.8 billion in 2016. In 2017 energy-related products represented the largest increase in both imports and exports in the U.S. Topic. Purchasing power parity Based on a purchasing power parity scale, which compares the relative purchasing power between two or more currencies, income levels and costs are used to calculate the difference in the affordability of a similar basket of goods. In 2014, Canada was rated as 26% more expensive than the U.S. According to a Statistics Canada report released in 2017, the Purchasing Power Parity PPP for gross domestic income was $0.84 cents per Canadian dollar. Comparable items cost $1 in Canada compared to $0.84 cents in the United States. Since 1999, the PPP had been relatively stable. The Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development OECD tracks price comparisons for industrialized countries, and in June 2015 Canada was listed as 6% more expensive than the United States, when the US dollar was used as the reference currency. Although wealth is more highly concentrated in the US, the median 50th percentile worker has about 23% more purchasing power as well. In terms of purchasing power parity, the most recent statistics from the IMF has Canada $35,494 lower than that in the United States $43,444. Debt-to-GDP ratio The OECD tracks member countries' debt-to-GDP ratio, the amount of a country's total gross government debt as a percentage of its GDP, as an indicator of an economy's health and a key factor for the sustainability of government finance. This compares United States public debt and Canadian public debt based on data from the CIA's World Factbook and the IMF. According to the Canadian Finance Minister Bill Murnau in his February 27, 2018 presentation of the Canadian federal budget for the fiscal year 2018-2019, the deficit was projected to be CDN $18.1 billion. According to the Fraser Institute, government spending at all levels federal, state, provincial and local has traditionally been higher in Canada than the United States. Topic. Taxation <laughs> 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 
Topic: <laughs> Personal income taxes. According to the OECD's report entitled Taxing Wages 2018, in 2017, the employee net average tax rate for a single person in Canada with no children was 22.8%, compared to 26.1% in the United States. Canada placed 11th lowest among 35 OECD countries. The OECD Estimates take into account federal and provincial or state taxes, as well as social security contributions and money returned in the form of family benefits. In 2016, Canada's tax revenue to GDP ratio was 31.7%, ranking 24th out of 35 OECD countries, compared to the US at 26%, ranking at 30th, according to the OECD. Topic. Corporate taxes According to a table updated to January 2018, produced by the Netherlands-based KPMG, one of the world's big four auditors, the corporate tax rate in Canada was 26.50% compared to 27% in the United States. KPMG calculated the Canadian corporate tax by adding the federal and provincial tax components. The federal component is 15%. Each of the 10 provinces and three territories have two different tax rates, one which is lower for small businesses which ranges from 0 to 4.5%, and higher for all other corporations, which ranges from 11.5 to 16%. Combined with the federal tax component the total can vary from 26.5% to 31%. According to KPMG, the U.S. federal corporate income tax rate was 21% for taxable years beginning after December 31, 2017. As well, M. Ost state and many local governments impose net income taxes. With the Top marginal rate generally rang ing from 0% to 12%. The mean of the top state tax rates was roughly 7.5%. M. Any states and localities impose gross receipts taxes, capital based taxes, and other taxes that are not reflected in the rates provided. A corporation may deduct its state and local income tax expense when computing its federal taxable income, generally resulting in a net effective rate of approximately 27%. <laughs> Unemployment In 2017, the unemployment rate in Canada in was 6.3%, compared to 4.4% unemployment rate in the United States. From November 2017 through October 2018, Canada's unemployment ranged from 5.8% to 6.0%. In Canada in October 2018, 11,200 new full time jobs were added, lowering the unemployment rate to 5.8% a 40 year low, underpinning expectations that the Bank of Canada would keep raising interest rates. However, the labor participation rate fell to its lowest point since October 1998. 65.2%. The US government counts the unemployed as people who don't have a job but have actively looked for one in the previous 4 weeks and are available for work. A 2018 Bloomberg article described the Disguised unemployed, including workers described as marginally attached, workers who are looking for work but have not actively in the last month. The disguised unemployed include discouraged, 
workers who stopped looking because there were no jobs during the deep and long recession. Others include 4.7 million part time workers who want full time jobs. The government counts the unemployed as people who don't have a job, but have actively looked for one in the previous four weeks, and are available for work. Quote, in 2014, then-Federal Reserve Chief Janet Yellen, said that because of the depth and length of the depression which created so many long-term unemployed, representing one-third of jobless workers, the high number of people who are working part-time even though they want full-time jobs, and the number of people who voluntarily quit. We shouldn't focus only on the unemployment rate. By 2014, labor force participation rate had fallen to 63% in the U.S., the lowest level in a generation. In a June 7, 2008 article in The Globe and Mail, Heather Scofield wrote that for the first time since 1982, Canada's unemployment rate was lower than that of the United States. Scofield said that this indicated that the economic recession was less painful in Canada where the May unemployment rate was 6.1% while the U.S. rate was 5.5%. At the height of the 2008-2009 recession in Canada, unemployment peaked at 8.3%. The subprime mortgage crisis and the 2007-2009 which followed, increased the unemployment rate to a peak of 10% in October 2009. Since then, the unemployment rate has been steadily falling. It reached 5% in December 2015. Topic. Human Development Index. The United Nations Human Development Index HDI, is one of several annual composite indices published by the UNDP Human Development Report HDR, office. The HDI ranks countries based on life expectancy, education, per capita income. Canada and the United States were placed in the very high human development category in 2017 with Canada ranking 12 and the United States ranking 13th 0.924 out of 189 countries other HDR annual composite indices include the inequality adjusted human development index IHDI with Canada ranking 12th with an index of 0.852 compared to the U.S. ranking 25th with an index of 0.797, the Gender Development Index GDI, the Gender Inequality Index GII, and the Multidimensional Poverty Index MPI. .In Canada life expectancy at birth is 82.5 and 79.5 in the U.S., expected years of schooling is 16.4 years in Canada and 16.5 in the U.S., mean years of schooling is 13.3 years in Canada and 13.4 in the U.S. GNI per capita 2011 PPP dollar is $43,433 in Canada and $54,941 in the United States. The Global Gender Gap Report WEF. In the World Economic Forum's 2017 The Global Gender Gap Report, the United States ranked 49th out of 144 countries, compared with Canada at 16. The U.S. ranked 82nd out of 144 in the subcategory that measures the differences between women's and men's health. 
Topic Global Livability Ranking Based on the Economist Intelligence Units EIU Annual Global Livability Ranking, comparing 140 cities worldwide for urban quality of life based on assessments of stability, health care, culture and environment, education and infrastructure. For a number of years, Canada's cities, Calgary, No. 4 in 2018, No. 5 in 2017, Vancouver, No. 1 from 2002 to 2010, No. 3 in 2017 Toronto No. 4 in 2017, Montreal, and Ottawa, have ranked among the top 10 livable cities in the world. The U.S. News & World Reports 2019 Best Countries Report, which is produced in collaboration with the Wharton School of the University of Pennsylvania and the BAV Group, ranked 80 countries based on 65 attributes including adventure, citizenship, cultural influence, entrepreneurship, heritage, movers, open for business, power and quality of life. Canada, with an overall score of 97 out of 100, ranked third out of the 80 countries. The U.S. scored 92. Canada ranked first on quality of life, and second on citizenship, sixth on entrepreneurship, seventh on open for business, twelfth on power and cultural influence. Canada ranked third overall and the U.S. ranked eighth. The U.S. ranked first in terms of power and fourth in terms of cultural influence. The U.S. placed 48th out of the 80 countries in terms of being open for business. Topic Food Sustainability Index FSI, based on rankings of the Food Sustainability Index, 2018, by Economist Intelligence Unit and the Barilla Center for Food and Nutrition Foundation, an annual index that grades 67 countries based on food waste, sustainable agriculture, and health and nutrition, Canada placed third with a score of 75.3 out of 100. The United States had a low score and did not make the top 20 list, due to an overweight population with low physical activity and diets high in sugar, meat, saturated fat and sodium. According to Martin Coring, editor at the Economist Intelligence Unit, the U.S. ranked 21st out of 34 countries in the 2017 FSI in overall food sustainability. In 2017, the U.S. where 42% of children are overweight, the sugar content of diets was the highest of participating countries. The U.S. also has the highest level of meat consumption in the world, at 225.4 grams per day, average per head. In 2017, the U.S. ranked 31st out of 34 countries in terms of sustainable agriculture. India, Tunisia and the United Arab Republic UAE had lower scores. Sustainable agriculture is measured based on a high level of GHG emissions from the agricultural sector, a low proportion of land set aside for organic farming less than 1% of the total and a relatively large amount of land around 22% devoted to biofuel production and animal feed. Topic. Government spending Government spending refers to public expenditure on goods and services. Topic. General Revenue Canada. In FY2017 the Canadian federal government spent $311 billion. Elderly benefits, which cost $48.1 billion, or 15 cents of every tax dollar, which include the Old Age Security and Guaranteed Income Supplement represented the biggest single expense. Unlike the Canada Pension Plan, CPP, the OAS and GIS are funded through general revenues they not independently funded. Other expenses included 
all other departments and agencies. $51 billion, other transfer payments $41.5 billion, Canada Health Transfer $36 billion, National Defence $25 billion, Public Debt Charges $24.15 billion, Children's Benefits $22 billion, Employment Insurance $20.7 billion, Fiscal Arrangement $17.1 billion, Canada Social Transfer $4.3 billion, Crown Corporations $8 billion, and Gas Tax Fund $2 billion. Topic: <laughs> Mandatory and Discretionary Spending, United States. The United States federal budget includes mandatory spending, discretionary spending, and interest on debt. In the United States in 2017, mandatory spending totaled $2.5 trillion or 13.1% of GDP and included Social Security $939 billion or 4.9% of GDP, Medicare $591 billion or 3.1% GDP, Medicaid $375 billion or 2.0% of GDP, and other $614 billion or 3.2% GDP. Discretionary spending totaled $1.2 trillion or 6.3% of GDP and included defense $590 billion or 3.1% GDP, and non-defense $610 billion or 3.2% GDP. Interest on debt totaled $263 billion representing 1.4% of GDP. <laughs> Health care The United States spends more on health care than Canada. According to the OECD 2015 report comparing 35 OECD member countries, Spending per person on health care remained highest in the United States CDN $11,916. Canada spent CDN $5,782 per capita on health care in 2015. In their 2017 report, the Canadian Institute for Health Information CIHI estimated that total health expenditure would reach $242 billion or $6,604 per Canadian in 2017, representing 11.5% of Canada's GDP and total health care spending is much higher 14.6% of GDP in the US versus 10% in Canada health care coverage is universal for Canadians and transferable outside a home province within Canada in the United States, however, the most common complaint is that approximately 50 million people are uninsured, and thus do not have access to even the most basic health care services which Canadians have access to. This puts a burden on the emergency room services in the states and causes increases in health care costs significantly. Canadians, however, receive better care to those Americans who receive treatment, and result measures. In Canada, health care is mostly paid through employee income taxes, while in the United States most companies choose to extend health benefits to full time employees. The most common complaint regarding the Canadian system are the long lines and waiting periods that have appeared for minor and non-life-threatening procedures over the last 15 years, since the introduction of widespread cuts to public funding. Separately, a number of medical tests and screenings are not covered or due to increasing costs, are no longer covered by the Canadian health system, forcing patients to pay for these services out of their own pockets. For these reasons, some relatively wealthy Canadians undergo treatment at private health care facilities at their own expense, either in Canada, in India, or in other nations to avoid waiting for medical treatment, joining medical tourists 
from many nations, including the U.S. Despite these sporadic problems, Canada's healthcare performance has been of higher quality on most factors. Efforts were made to reduce wait times by many provincial governments in the 1990s and 2000s, in an effort to improve care. Topic. Fiscal and monetary policy Topic. Inflation and the Consumer Price Index In Canada in September 2018, the Consumer Price Index CPI rose 2.2% on a year-over-year -year basis. The Bank of Canada's monthly CPI measures changes in consumer prices based on the price of a fixed basket of goods and services purchased by Canadian consumers, such as made up of goods and services that Canadians typically buy, such as food, housing, transportation, furniture, clothing, recreation, and other items, with the target of maintaining the rate of inflation the year-over-year -year increase in the total CPI at 2%, midpoint of an inflation control target range of 1-3%. On October 24, 2018 the Bank of Canada raised its benchmark interest rate to 1.75%, the highest it has reached in 10 years to prevent inflation. The key interest rate had been kept low in response to the 2008 economic slowdown. By raising the rate, the Bank of Canada is indicating that the Canadian economy no longer needs stimulus. In September 2018, the U.S. Federal Reserve raised its key interest rate to 2.25%. Social mobility According to a OECD publication entitled A Broken Social Elevator? How to promote social mobility, with the rise in income inequality since the 1990s, social mobility has shifted so that fewer people in the bottom quintiles have moved up the ladder, those in the higher quintiles remain wealthy. Based on the OECD average in this 2018 report, it takes an estimated four generations for a low-income family in Canada to earn the Canadian average income. The OECD average is an estimated 4.5 generations and in the United States it takes five generations or 150 years to earn the American average income. See socioeconomic mobility in the United States and socioeconomic mobility in Canada. Topic workforce productivity Labor or workforce productivity measures the efficiency with which labor is used to produce goods and services. According to a 2017 Conference Board of Canada article, in 2015, Canada's level of labour productivity was $49 per hour worked, much lower than that of the United States, at $63, Alberta's level was 99%. The lowest was in Prince Edward Island at 58%. The article noted that over previous five-year period, Canada outperformed the U.S. on labor productivity growth. In May 2018, Statistics Canada reported that across Canada, labor productivity rose 2.2%. The increase in 2016 was 0.6%. According to a 2004 article, Canadian workers were estimated to be 82% as productive per hour as their American counterparts. The industries with the largest productivity advantages for the U.S. are the manufacturing, particularly electronics and computer, finance, and service sectors. 
Industries where Canada is more productive than the U.S. are the construction and natural resources sectors with Canadian workers achieving 129% relative productivity. The productivity gap was even larger in the 1950s but the difference narrowed, aided by the elimination of the smaller market problem through free trade. The gap closed somewhat in the 1980s but at a much slower pace than in the 1960s. From 1961 to 1973 labour productivity rose annually by 3.3% in Canada and 1.7% in the United States. According to a 1997 IMF report, from 1973 to 1995 productivity growth was 1.1% in Canada and 0.8% in the United States. The productivity gap began to widen again in the 1990s, particularly in the manufacturing sector. According to a 2005 article, by 2000, this was called Canada's excellence gap by the chief economist of Canadian manufacturers and exporters. The United States has the second highest productivity of the G8 countries, while Canada's is fifth based on the 1997 estimate. Five main reasons for the productivity gap the lower capital intensity of economic activity in Canada, an innovation gap in Canada relative to the United States, Canada's relatively underdeveloped high tech sector, less developed human capital in Canada in terms of proportionately fewer university graduates and scientists and engineers in research and development, and more limited economies of scale and scope in Canada. See also Economy of Canada Economy of the United States OECD main economic indicators may equals equals notes <laughs>